Welcome to DIY Easy Crafts. Today we're going to take a look at how to make a Lexan windshield for a Carolina Skiff J16. Now this is a project boat that I that I bought. I did a lot of little fiberglass repairs on it. I regel coated it. Uh, but when I got it all done, um, I really decided that I just wanted to have a little windscreen on it. I was able to uh, purchase a sheet of a quarter inch thick Lexan. Uh, it was 18 inches uh, by 24 inches from this eatstreetplastics.com and that was about 32 or 33 dollars. Uh, I also found rubber grommets from rubber free, rubberfeetwarehouse.com and those were uh, designed to fit into a 3 8 hole and also hold the quarter inch uh, Lexan or plexiglass. The first step was going to be to measure the center console and when you're doing so take note that at least my center console angles in as it goes upward. Uh, so you want to you want to kind of draw that accurately or trace it accurately. I made a uh, cardboard template, the exact shape, you know, size and shape of the windscreen uh, windshield that I wanted. Note that the that the foldovers on both sides have to be um, trimmed a little bit so that they're level with the floor. I'm going to use a, a jigsaw with a laminate blade to cut out the windscreen uh, windshield. I did a small sample cut just to see how smooth the cut was going to be. It worked out fine. Um, this was not difficult at all. It actually cuts very easily. I didn't push very hard. I let the uh, blade actually do most of the work. I just really just took my time and I tried to keep it as straight as possible. There's a bunch of different ways that you could cut plexiglass. Uh, this was just you know, the preferred method that, that I had for this particular project. Now, no matter how careful you are, uh, those edges are going to be a little bit, you know, uneven. I was really surprised and happy with, with the way it came out. I mean, the jigsaw did a great job. This is trimming the, um, the fold over on one side, you know, then I'll trim the fold over on the other side. I went to a belt sander. Um, you don't have to do this. You could do it with an oscillating sander just to clean up all of the edges and I also chamfered each of the edges a little bit so they wouldn't be sharp. I used an oscillating sander on the uh, on the curved corners and then I transferred my fold marks onto the edge of the Lexan because I'm going to remove the protective coating at this point and that's where that's where I had my marks. I wanted to remove the plastic coating because I'm going to use a heat gun uh, to warm up the Lexan in order to bend it. So I just clamped it with the uh, location marked, you know, with that marker, with that Sharpie. I used a couple of clamps and I have it over a, a 2x4. Uh, that has a nice, you know, curve to it, curved corner. I used the heat gun and just slowly went back and forth warming up the Lexan right along uh, the edge that I want to bend it on. Um, it took a while. This is, you know, fairly thick stuff, quarter inch thick. Um, probably took at least, you know, five minutes of, of heating, maybe a little bit more. You don't want to force it. You almost want it to wait for it to be ready to bend. Uh, now I'm using a, a piece of one by two, and all that is is just to prevent my hands from getting burned. You know, the, the, the Lexan really heats up with that heat gun. So I'm just going to see if it's, flex if it's flexible enough. It wasn't. I went back and, and heated it up some more, and then I was able to bend it. And I'm probably, on this side, I probably forced this bend. Um, I, I probably should have heated it up a little bit more so it bent a little bit easier. And then what you do is hold it in place for a couple of minutes without the heat on it, and it will hold, you know, hold its shape. So that's one side bent. Notice that the, the bend was not perfectly accurate to my where I wanted it. In fact, I lost, you know, when I uh, calculated on both sides, probably three quarters of an inch. So actually on one side, I put some painter's tape and I relayed out um, where I had to cut it and where I had to fold it. And I trimmed off about three quarters of an inch from that side. I found that out because I, I held the Lexan up on the actual boat console and saw where it lined up. So, you know, test fitting is very important. Um, anyway, I reset it up. This is the second side. I heated it uh, much for a much longer amount of time this time, very slowly. You don't really want to hold that heat gun in one specific spot for too long. You don't want to do damage, uh, 
you know, to one spot of the left hand. You just want to warm it up over the entire length that you're going to bend. And again, just using a, a piece of wood to prevent my fingers from getting burned, I'm going to bend that down as, as close as I can to a right angle. And then I'll just turn off the heat gun, let it stay in that position for a couple minutes. And that's, that's the hard part. All that's left now is to drill the holes for the grommets. So I'm going to do uh, three holes on the, on the front and one on each side. Oh, I forgot about this. You can clean up that, that cut edge a little bit more just with a flame. A little torch. Just be careful. You don't want to put too much heat on it. I'm going to use a step drill. Uh, and again, you can, you can use any type of drill you want. Uh, this one works very nicely um, and very easily. You don't want to put a lot of uh, force on it and you want to drill as slow as possible. Um, so a lot of times you can just oscillate the drill speed on and off, on and off. And when it builds up uh, the burr, I like to clean that burr off. And notice the painter's tape on there. I've got that marked um, right at the, the correct width. I'm trying to drill each of these holes to 3 eighths uh, so that they'll hold the grommet, the rubber grommets. So with this particular step drill, I drilled each side and then I'll have to flip this over and drill the other side so that the entire uh, thickness of the Lex hand is drilled out to the 3 8 diameter. Again, nothing difficult here. And before I drilled these holes, I did drill um, a piece of the scrap material that I had just to make sure you know, that it worked and it didn't crack. These are the little rubber grommets that I got. About a quarter inch uh, on the inside diameter, uh, three eighths hole through the Lex hand. I squeezed it and I tried to force one end through that hole. Um, easier than it sounds. <laughs> it took a few minutes. It wasn't real difficult, but you do have to kind of force that one side through. I just used a, a small diameter Phillips screwdriver. You know, once you get one going and you kind of figure out where you have to press and where you have to you know, push, it goes pretty easy. Mounting it to the boat was simple. You know, I drilled, um, marked and drilled holes. Um, I inserted stainless steel hardware, so it's got a washer on one side, and on the back side, it's got a fender washer and a stainless steel nut. Now, notice I didn't use lock nuts, but I did apply some silicone to the threads uh, so the vibrations won't cause that nut to get loose. This is the finished product. A very nice tinted Lexhand uh, windshield or windscreen. Um, this particular one was... Uh, mounted on a Carolina Skiff J16. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to put links to all of the other uh, Carolina Skiff projects that I did uh, right in the description of this video. Thank you very much for watching.